Hi there, my name is Sarah and I'm here with the Rural Forward North Carolina team and our Foundation for Health Leadership and Innovation colleagues from the Center of Excellence for Integrated Care. Almost everyone in our communities has been impacted by COVID-19 in some way, but many people are coping with changes and stress for themselves in addition to being a parent and trying to support children who are also experiencing significant uncertainty and change. So Lisa, can you tell us a little bit about how this time of uncertainty affects parenting? This time has been one of constant change for all of us and disruption to our lives and roles. Um, and that certainly includes an impact on parenting. Uh, there are changes to schooling, um, socializing, summer activities, um, and the ever-present concerns around contracting it um, and exposure. And it's just overwhelming and difficult to feel confident in decisions that affect your children. Um, but these changes, even though they're upsetting, and the tough part is that children need to be able to count on adults staying calm as well as balancing, validating that frustration of the unknown and feelings of uncertainty around staying uh, around these changes. Um, with my own kids, I try and focus on the positive uh, and hope that um, I'm encouraging them to do the same. Um, I lean on my own adult support system, my husband, to be able to help process our worries, but also not overburden the kids as well. Um, and it's okay to set those parental boundaries, um, especially now. Lisa, what should parents know about their children's mental and emotional health during this time? So I think the stress of COVID has hit kids kind of all at once, like a, a tsunami is the analogy that I think of. Um, and the developmental age of the child, along with other really contextual and individual variables, meaning just who they are as people, that'll help determine how that child's gonna navigate the waters. Um, one thing we can focus on is having an adult be available and responsive to a child. And that might look like checking in with the child every once in a while on a regular basis, seeing how they're feeling, um, spending quality time together, and just allowing space to be able to be available if that child decides that he or she wants to talk. Um, and being available might not sound like much, but when a parent is juggling all their own stresses, uh, it can feel kind of like an impossible task. Um, my own 11-year-old is really tired of hearing me say, I don't know, when he asks questions about school or baseball or when air you will be open or when whatever will be open. Um, but I just try to say, I don't know, we'll find out together. Um, and that's not saying that that necessarily uh, satisfies his quest for getting some concrete answer, but at least it helps him know that he's not figuring it out on his own. Um, many people have said that kids growing up with this experience in their history will be more resilient, more flexible, more compassionate, and perhaps even more willing to understand how we're all connected to one another. So I try to um, remember that piece of it too as you're helping kids uh, navigate their uh, me making, I guess, around all of this. Thanks so much, Lisa. Amelia and Sarah, could you give us some tips for parenting during a pandemic? Yeah. Um, so most importantly, just focus on what you can control um, and practicing acceptance that the only constant we really have right now is change. Uh, being gentle with yourself, giving yourself grace that things are just constantly changing and that that's hard for everybody. Um, maybe the schedule that you put into place last week, it worked great, wonderfully, uh, you were able to manage it, but then this week you're trying it out and it's a disaster. That's okay. Just got to adjust. Um, and then really just kind of sticking to the basics. So ensuring your kids are having some sort of meaningful movement that day. Are they eating nourishing food? That's wonderful. Are they getting some solid sleep? And which is most importantly, do they feel loved and cared for? Do they feel safe? And children also benefit from structure and routine, but they also need your attention, your compassion, and your playfulness during this time. So tune in to your children, actively listen, check into their reactions and their feelings about what's going on. For younger children, tune into their behavior, since they might not be able to verbalize for themselves yet, to see how they are adjusting. And explore different ways to play. And also don't forget to have alone or quiet time for yourself too. Um, there are lots of parents who are working hard and long hours for essential positions and parents who are spending longer than expected away from their children due to changing custody schedules during this time. And we see you parents too. Um, we hope you can get some alternative quality time together 
You can do this by scheduling additional phone calls or video chats, exchanging written letters, making a craft together over FaceTime, or playing an online game together. So we hope you all hang in there and we will see this through. Yes, we will, Amelia. For more resources, check out our previous videos in this series. Um, they're on Facebook and YouTube, and you can also visit us at foundationhli.org, and we'll talk soon.